He was like no one else I'd ever met before. He had crystal clarity. He was just someone who was obviously uh, a master. Like all the Western students, we only knew him for a very short amount of time. But that very short amount of time was life-changing for all of us. His door was always open. We would come in without even knocking at the door. The sort of various cliches about meeting your guru. You know, like, it's like we always knew each other. The aspiration was, could I become even a little bit like this person? I just wanted to be like him. And I'm not the kind of guy to follow people, but I ended up following him. In the 1950s, there were a lot of Tibetans leaving the country. Kanji Rinpoche realised that the Buddhist teachings, until then, which had been preserved by Tibetans, were in danger. He wrote to the Dalai Lama, who responded by saying he should go, and that he should take with him a copy of the Kangyu, which is over 200 volumes. This was two truckloads of packaged books, and they had to carry them literally physically over the Himalayan mountains. Imagine if we had all the uh, notes of all the scientists, Western scientists, all together, and many of them had not been published. How preciously would we guard them? And that is what I think for my father, the importance of these books. So we went back in 1980, two weeks into a month-long practice, when I had a terrible epileptic fit, which really rocked my faith. I was flown back to New Zealand, and I think they pretty much zoned me out for 30 years. Now, found that uh, Kanji Rinpoche's family were in France, and what was you know, 10 or 20 Western students had increased with thousands and thousands of students. So I want to go back from New Zealand to India and find out where that all began. We want to go back and, and, and follow in Kanji Rinpoche's steps and tell the story of Kanji Rinpoche.